Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Gary A. Swaby, and you're now listening to or watching Snowfall Aftermath. And I am here with Mr. Richard Bailey Jr. Um, how are you doing today, Richard? Doing good, Gary. What's up, listeners and viewers? What's up, indeed? And I see uh, you're Franklin's accountant. So uh, I see next week you're probably going to have a lot of drama to deal with then. Yeah, I have a lot of bad news to, to deliver to Franklin personally next week, so I figure I might as well make an appearance in this episode of Snowfall Aftermath. I might not survive next week. <laughs> oh, yeah. And of course, I'm Mr. Gary Swaby, and um, my little name here is Leon's Book Club Buddy. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> of course, you know, uh, Leon had given uh, Franklin a book to read, and, and Franklin didn't read it, and he was very upset about that, but yeah uh very interesting stuff so today we are going to be recapping i forgot to say but i'm going to say it now uh we are going to be recapping snowfall season five episode nine and the title of the episode was departures um and yeah very interesting title there but um yeah so that was episode nine this this was following from the wedding episode last week which was a very great episode also uh, but this episode in particular was pretty interesting just because of the the spin you know that we we got on on franklin and everything mm -hmm. um but yeah th this kind of sets up a, a a very interesting finale so there is a lot to say today in today's episode and i can't wait to see uh what what the people will have to say and you know speaking of the people you know you guys Please do remember to hit that like button. That is very important. Please also, you know, join in in the discussion. If we say something that you know um, that catches your interest or something that you uh, that sparks something in your mind and you want to respond, please do drop those comments. You know, we welcome all comments. You know, whether they're positive, negative, let us know what you think. And then also consider subscribing to the channel if there's other content you like here. You know, we had we had some other uh, snowfall content up there too, um, interviews and stuff. And then you know we got the power cast, uh, which there is a finale for that this week. So, you know, there's a lot of interesting content to check out on the channel. So, definitely do hit that subscribe button if you are interested. Um, but yeah, so the way this works is Richard and I are each going to give our takeaways on this particular episode, you know, and talk about some of the things that stood out to us. Um, and then after that, you know, we are going to head over to our uh, questions and discussion segment where we have more of a back and forth conversation about some of the topics and some of the questions that have come up after watching this episode. Um, and we have also seen the trailer. So, you know, we'll talk about some trailer specific stuff for the finale. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah that's 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 how it works so i'm gonna head right over to you know mr richard bailey jr the floor is yours so go ahead and hit us with your takeaways all right so first and foremost i just want to say this was a fantastic episode of snowfall the perfect episode to set up the finale um and i do have a, a quite a bit of takeaways to get to today but before i get to the takeaways let me just go ahead and say and just say one of the best lines I heard from this episode. Um, you wanted to be out in front? Well, now you are. Good luck. That's, of course, Franklin's final conversation to Louis in this episode. Um, just again, excellent acting, everything. So let's get into some of those more specific takeaways. So my first takeaway from this episode, I really like the journey that we went on with Buckley in this episode, because what you know about this character so far in the season, yes, he did work for the, uh, the crash unit. So he pretty much was getting Intel from Louie and Jerome. He was taking advantage of their product, going to the club free, you know, all the time. And basically he was still doing what he did, you know, as far as going to the projects basically doing all this other stuff that he was supposed to do because that was his job. So in this episode, obviously, you know, the way the episode started is he finally, they go after Kane. And I like how you see just how manipulative the character is when he describes what happened and you actually see what happened 
whereas they basically went after these guys. The guys wasn't shooting at them, no, nothing, nothing of the sort. They were the ones to 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 make the to take the first shot. And you see him actually shoot Kane. We find out later in this episode that the bullet went into Kane's spinal cord and he will never walk again. So that's important. And I'm pretty sure we're going to find out more about that next week. But I like how in this episode, you basically see the downward spiral that he goes on, where he's doing all of this stuff because it's his job to protect and serve, right? So he goes, he tells his boss what happened, and then they 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 they, they force him to try to take a drug test, and they, they suspend him, take his gun and his badge. So he loses his job. And, you know, he makes this whole monologue about the fact that you know what 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 does it matter if i'm clean or not i'm doing whatever i got to do to actually do the job so it just goes to show it doesn't matter how much work you've done for these people at the end of the day they didn't really appreciate you and and, and, and again you know there's some racial stuff in there as well but i thought they did a very good job show showcasing that and then of course you see because we know that he had a, a bad habit of doing of you know doing doing co cocaine he basically does get high uh, he had a couple of exchanges in this episode where, you know, I, they had that scene where he held up the drug dealer at gunpoint just to get access to the drugs. Now, I will say this. I like the twists that they have in this episode because what I th was thinking was going to happen is that eventually he would come back and he would have a very bad exchange with Louis and Jerome. And maybe because he was high and he had nothing to lose, he actually would try to take out Jerome. I actually was thinking that was going to happen. So I was very surprised by the end by the end of this episode, Louis basically makes a proposition to him. Now, what you also see about Louis in this episode is that you're again seeing the more ruthless, power hungry side of her, where she tells him, Oh, I understand that you lost a partner in all of this, but I don't care about any of that. That's none of my business. I asked you to do a job and I will pay you the rest of your money after you kill Kane. So you, you're seeing a much darker more ruthless side of Louis. And this is what this business does to people. So, but that, but again, as far as the Buckley character is concerned, you also see the cost, how it affects him personally, because he has kids. He's probably going to lose his kids. You know, they have a, the relationship he has with his uh, wife or his ex rather, because we do know that he is divorced. So I thought it was important to, to show that because there are a lot of shows where you see that you hear that a character is going through a struggle. And I'm not going to mention a show. There's a show we've seen recently and talked about on here where there's a character that goes through a struggle and you see the character, but you never see what the struggle is that they actually are facing on the other side of that. In this episode, you saw everything that Buckley had to deal with and how it impacted his family. So I think that was very important to show that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I appreciate that journey. Uh, I am questioning as to whether or not He's going to comply with Louis because, again, he has nothing to lose right now, you know, and Louis thinks that she can control people, you know, based on what we have seen. So I'm very curious to see what's going to happen as we as we go into the finale next week and whether or not he's going to be somebody that she can trust and that he's going to always do whatever she says now that she has him on payroll. So we'll see about that. Um, that's that's one takeaway. Uh for the other takeaway in this episode, again, Franklin, you know, the episode stars, you know, Lou, you know, he does get a lot of pages from Leon and Leon basically tells him that Louie basically she went against us and she did that hit on Kane. It feels as though this entire episode, Franklin, you know, he's indecisive in the in the very beginning and he does not want to get involved in any of the stuff that's happening with Louis Jerome and the fallout from shooting Kane. He does go out, go on a, on a trip with Verone and, and doing that whole and, and going on that trip. You're basically, I feel as though they're trying to show you more about his relationship with Verone. And they want you to be able to trust this character because they show you that she is in his corner. All of, you know, she loves him, and all this other stuff. And she acknowledges that she's done bad things. He's done bad things as well. But yet they were still made m m meant to be in each other's life. So basically, they're doing everything that they can to let you know that this is somebody who truly is in Franklin's corner and they want you to care about this character, which I think is interesting because a lot of people still do not trust her. But um, pretty much, you know, when he comes back, he does eventually have a conversation with Louis and he comes to the realization 
And after having that conversation, he basically says, okay, you can do your own thing, whatever. But then she tells him, oh, yes. And by the way, just so you know, I do have that side deal going on with Teddy. And that was it. That was it. You could physically see him, his expression change. He gets angry. And then he has that line that I started off my takeaway with, which I thought was an excellent line. So Franklin, at the very end of this episode, confronts Teddy. And he's very confident. And I'm going to give a shout out to uh, JB as well as Inga71 because they commented on our previous video that went up last night, the interview that, that Dana had captured. Um, and pretty much they commented and said that this was an excellent way to show people how the story could have ended positively for Franklin, where he has all of his money and he, and he tells Teddy, I know I made you $56 million. That's a hell of a lot of money, right? Yes, he made Teddy all this money. And because Teddy turned his back and decided to work with Louie, okay, he said, okay, it's done. So he is basically in a position to leave on his own terms. He doesn't have to worry about anything. However, that is not what's going to happen because we know that Franklin's money, Teddy has access to it now. So next week is going to be very interesting. And we'll talk about the trailer later. But uh, overall, um, I thought it was a fantastic episode. Um, one other, yeah, two other quick points I want to mention uh, that I do like about this episode because they always throw in subtle hints of, of certain things. Um, I really like, number one, that we saw that um, when Teddy and Gustavo met up with Louis and they did their whole deal, right, at, right after Louis leaves, Gustavo says, "Hey, do you think it's a smart idea to start a feud with, 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 with to start to start a blood feud with the family?" So, in my opinion, this is Teddy. This is uh, Gustavo acknowledging Teddy, saying that what he's doing is not a good idea, and actually standing up for Franklin to an extent. Now, I don't know how far he's going to go to stand up for Franklin, but just him acknowledging that I think was important. Because it, it goes back to all the stuff that he's gone through with Franklin this particular season, uh, in particular, the Iliad episode that we talked about. Um, and the fact that Franklin made it a point to come back and get him after he got free. So this is great because we were wondering which side Gustavo was going to rest on. He understands Franklin a lot more than Teddy does. So I'm curious to see now how is this going to progress in the next episode? And the last point I want to make is that also at the end of this episode, we saw that Ruben finally, you know, after meeting up with Sissy early in this episode and getting intel and confirming that he did get access to, he did get an ID of the people that were at that party. He basically, they they find Avi and they knock him out. Now, now I saw some people saying, what happened to Avi? Is Avi dead? No, no. Avi is a very tough character. I'm pretty sure he just got knocked out, but this is the starting of the spiral effect of them going after everybody. And I think in the trailer next week, you saw Gustavo was being chased as well. So this is how it all starts in terms of them starting to go after people individually. Now, how Avi is going to respond to this situation? Is he going to cooperate with them? Uh, we'll see how this impacts everything. Um, but this is also vital because earlier in this episode, Teddy met up with Avi and basically said that he wanted to triple the amount of guns that he wanted to purchase. And obviously we know that's Franklin's money he's intending to use for that entire purpose. So if Avi is captured um, and this transaction has already started to happen, we already know that Teddy has already had somebody trying to get access to pull the money out. So there's a lot of chaos that's going to happen next week. Um, and I can't wait to see how it all unfolds. But um, this was a fantastic episode to set up the inevitable, the season finale that we're going to get next week. And uh, I just can't wait to see what happens next. Oh, yeah. Ex excellent takeaways. Excellent breakdown uh, <laughs> of the, the RV situation. Because I was going to ask about that as well later. So, uh, yeah, it's great that you uh, touched on that and you gave some insight into that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, um, as usual, great observations from uh, Mr. Richard Bailey Jr. Um, so yeah, I'll go ahead and give my takeaways now. Um, so I guess I'll start with, so 
I'll start with Leon. So I I just really like the uh, journey that Leon has been on in this season because in previous seasons, he could have been looked at as like, you know, Franklin's weak sidekick. Like, you know, he's he's a laughing stock or he's just, you know, he's just Franklin's sidekick and he's he's nobody really important. Um, you know, he, he could have seemed laughable to many people, you know, like, or someone who's not really a threat or who's not really capable of doing anything significant, you know. Um, but I feel like in this season, he's really kind of grown into um, this sort of like admirable person. Um, and, you know, he is on a journey at the moment where it seems like he is, um, you know, because we talked about, uh, I think it was the last week or the week before, how sometimes when we have these villainous characters who are tied to the drug dealer life lifestyle, you know, we've talked about how they don't often get to make that change. They don't get to make that transition to living a normal life where they're able to help people and uh, do meaningful things in society. But I'm thinking if there's one character that could, you know, could do something of that sort, it would be Leon at this moment because he's really starting to come turn into this character who, who and it seems like it seems more pure hearted than Jerome's mission just because Jerome has he's done some crazy things in the past and you know he's he's a lot older as well and he knowingly chose his path and he continues to align himself with Louis who is deep in into that stuff as well so it's like with him it's kind of a contradiction but with leon we, like it really feels like it's pure like it's pure energy he he's able to see the wrong that they've been doing and he really wants to help the community he sees that the system isn't right it isn't it isn't designed for them for you know for people like us and he wants to do something to kind of uplift you know that that whole situation so I am hoping that he is able to make it. I mean, at this point, I think anyone's in danger of getting killed off um, at this point in the show. But um, I really hope that Leon is the one character that could could can really do the things that he's trying to do. So obviously, he wants some time away. He wants to travel the world and see Africa and these things. And I'm sure if he gets a chance to do that, um, he is going to be f full with inspiration and he's going to he's going to set himself on a different path in life, I think, if he's able to to do that with Wanda. Um, and I do like that he's he's also opened up to Wanda and his feelings for her. Um, and um, Wanda said something that I, I didn't think about, like, because, you know, she was like, oh, so you want, you want to take me out of the country to be with me? But you don't want to be with me here because of how it will look because you're with, you know, someone who's who's an addict or an ex-addict or whatever. And I guess that would like we all know uh, Leon's friends would probably look at him like he's crazy for for, you know, dating an ex-addict, an ex-fiend, because that was a customer at one point. You know, they, they see her as a potential potential customer, basically. So I didn't I didn't even think about that until she said it. But that is a real thing. It's like if you really love this girl, then you have to like fully, you know, you have to fully commit to that and show everyone that, look, this is my woman. She might have had, you know, this past where she was a customer, she was a user, but now she's my woman and she is going to be, you know, you are going to respect her like you respect me. And if you disrespect her, then you're disrespecting me. You know, if he, he, he has to fully claim her like that, if that to show that that's really you know, what he's about and what he wants. And I hope that he does do that as well, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I like I like the the journey that Leon's been on in this season because, you know, last season, obviously, um, some unfortunate things happened where the little child was killed unintentionally. Um, but he's been able to kind of, you know, um, he's been able to bounce back from that. So um, I like that. And I like that also, he's able to talk to Franklin and kind of appeal to him a little bit um, because we are starting to see more of a, a human side. I'm going to talk about this a bit more in a sec, but we are starting to see a bit more of a human side of Franklin as well. And I think Leon is one of the positive people around him that helps him um, open up like that. 
And of course we had the scene where he visits Franklin at his penthouse. Um, and, you know, he points out, you know, you're, you're, you're here in the comfort of your, your penthouse and you're not, you know, basically his whole point was you're not doing anything about the whole Kane situation because Louis has, you know, she's made her move and she's almost like, she's almost had Kane killed after they, they already made a deal with him and everything. And he kind of wants Franklin to do something about it, to fix things. But Franklin is basically saying he he's out to survive himself. Like he want, he's out to look after himself and his family and make sure he can survive. Um, and, you know, Leon is basically coming from the perspective of like, you know, you've got this big penthouse, you've got more than what any of our people have. You should be doing something to, you know, to help, you know, because we're, we're out here really living you know, in, in, uh, in all of these hard times and everything like that. So, so yeah, um, I liked that scene as well, because I think that is one of the things that ultimately led to some of Franklin's actions throughout this, uh, this episode. So yeah, I, I like the path that Leon has been on, um, you know, and I, it makes me wonder as well, you know, what would Franklin actually think if he read that book that was recommended to him by Leon? Like, would that shift his perspective, you know, any more than than his perspective already has shift? Like, would, would it be a complete transition for him, you know, if he were to kind of read that book and get the same knowledge and perspective that Leon has, you know? So that was interesting for me. But um, so... Before I get to Franklin, I also want to point out Louis because this was, you know, I, I see this episode as um, it's the rise of Louis and sort of the, it, well, it's not exactly a downfall, but it's like, it's Franklin taking a step down or, almost and, and Louis taking a step up. So, you know, Louis, of course, in this episode, she's basically going on a power trip you know, she's she's taking her position of power. She's making moves. Um, you know, she's doing all the things a, a kingpin does, basically. Um, and, you know, even just the way that, you know, when Franklin is at the club and, you know, the, 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 the woman obviously comes up and says, oh, do you want me to send Franklin up? And she's like, no, we'll come down. So she doesn't even want Franklin to come up, you know, anymore. Like, she wants to keep him down, you know, down at, at the bomb level and address him down there kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, she was like on a real big power trip throughout this episode. And then, of course, we we had that moment where she tells Franklin the truth and he delivers that line that you, you said, Rich. Um, and of course, that was a powerful moment. That was kind of like the change in of the guard right there. Um, and we knew that Franklin was going to be upset when this happened. Um, I, I think he took it better than I was expecting, but um, <laughs> but yeah, he he was definitely heated. Um, but I think you know bef before she said that, he was already kind of like uh, um, he was kind of like apologizing or whatever. Like he was kind of reasoning with with her a, a little bit, but then you know she hit him with that bombshell, and then you know of course he. I mean, who wouldn't be angry because you went behind his back. You know, so that is like he's well within his rights to get upset at that moment, I think. Um, and yeah, like and then the whole the whole Buckley thing, of course. And, you know, her she her solution is to offer him, um, you know, a position in her empire, you know, um, and I didn't see that coming at all. I thought, you know, I thought something was going to happen like what you said, Rich. I thought Buckley was going to come to the club and make some trouble. You know, I thought he was going to go after Jerome or even go after Louis and, and do something, you know, do something crazy. But she, you know, she she made a boss move and extended her hand to him and said, look, you know, I'll offer you a position in my company. So that is interesting. And uh, I do want to have a conversation about that later. But, um, yeah, uh, the rise of Louis was was definitely interesting. And we're seeing Jerome take more of a backseat as well. Um, and I, I think Jerome's position in particular is going to be tested um, at some point because it's only going to be so long 
that he can just stand by and be passive like that as Louis goes on this power trip. Because, you know, he is Franklin's uncle. Sissy is his his sister. Um, at some point, these connections are going to be tested. Like, because we see in the trailer, there is going to be a face-to-face -face between Louis and Franklin. And it looks like there's a gun involved in that. We're going to talk more about that later. But yeah, um, there is something is going to happen where Jerome is going to have to make some kind of response. And who is that response going to be in favor, in favor to? You know, uh, because he has a responsibility as an uncle, as a brother, and as a husband now. So what is going to happen when that's put to the test, you know? Um, but yeah, uh, Louis' power trip throughout the episode was, was was pretty interesting. And, you know, even though the uh, the assault on, on, uh, on Kane didn't go as expected, she kind of bounced back. You know, she like I thought it was going to be more of a, a big thing when she found out that um, Kane wasn't actually dead. But, you know, it, it didn't it didn't cause too much heat. But one thing I'll say is that those words Franklin spoke were for a reason. You know, he said good luck to her. And I think, you know, now that she's recruited Buckley into her organization, there is going to be some clapback. There is going to be some response, I think, you know, because somebody is somebody knows somebody in the streets and somebody knows Buckley. They know what he is. They know who he is. They know he's a cop. They know he's the one that shot up the pool hall, you know, where 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 Kane was. And we saw in the episode that, you know, when Buckley went to buy the, the coke, the drugs or whatever, they denied him. And that tells me they know who he is. They know he's a cop. They know, you know, they don't want to serve him. So they know who he is. And he is suspended at this moment, which means, you know, he doesn't have the protection of, of the, the, you know, his cops, his cop brethren anymore. So, yeah, I think that leaves, um, that leaves them vulnerable to re retaliation. I'm just wondering if you know, whenever Kane's crew decides to retaliate, are they going to include Leon and Franklin in this? Or are they going to know that there's been a divide of some sorts? You know, I think that is going to be a big question, but we still have yet to see that scene where Franklin is in the hospital uh, talking to Kane. So maybe that will come into play um, before any kind of retaliation, or maybe that's after, who knows, you know, uh, I guess we got to find out, but yeah. Uh, there's a lot to think about with with Louis' rise to power. And um, I do like that Gustavo kind of questioned Teddy over it as well, like you you mentioned, Rich, because that shows that, you know, he does he does have some sort of connection, some sort of understanding to Franklin and his family and, and the position that this puts Franklin in. So that was cool to see him acknowledge that. Um, so yeah, so let's get to Franklin now. So as for Franklin, I like, I really like this the, the take of Franklin that we saw in this episode because um, it just kind of built upon last week's episode where we got to see more of what was in his mind and what what he was thinking about. And in this episode, we, we see him have some more humility um, some more understanding of things. Um, and of course, you know, the first thing is the whole Kane Buckley situation. And, you know, his first response is he, he's not, he's not too angry about the situation. He kind of understands it, you know, as he's talking to Leon about it, about it, he's kind of understanding Louis' position. He knows why he, he, I guess in a sense, he knows why she wanted to do it, you know, um, but at that point, he doesn't know that she went behind his back. But um, but he shows that understanding of things. Um, and then, you know, um, and then the whole Varenique thing, you know, he, uh, he opens up to her about what it was like being high. And he, he tells her, you know, even though she wasn't there, he had a conversation with her. And of course, she asks what was said. And, you know, he, he wants to actually fly her away to another country to tell her this story, you know. <laughs> um, and I guess it's convenient that he can fly a plane. Um, so, you know, they fly away, they sit on the beach and then he, he opens up to her and tells her. And of course, Veronique, um, 
she starts to tell more about her past, about how, you know, she uh, she was, uh, I guess she was doing some, some uh, suspect activities and, you know, she ended up having to kill someone. Um, and then, you know, her point was basically, you know, I did all that, but then I fell in love with you in Los Angeles, like, um, and, you know, she was kind of comparing it to Franklin because Franklin was kind of feeling guilty about the things he's done. Um, and, you know, obviously Franklin was like, you know, it's not the same, it's, it's different. Um, you know, your position is different than mine, but, you know, I guess she's trying to, she, she's trying to say that, you know, you can still change. You, it only matters the person you are now and what you're going to do next. Like, that's what matters. I guess that's what she was trying to relay, but still that makes her f seem a bit suspect <laughs> as well, of course, like, she, we're, we're always going to suspect her. That's just what it is now. Like, you know, she, she keeps telling these stories about her past and it's like, none of these stories are good. Like that she's telling of her past. It's like, okay, so you've been a scammer your whole life then. Okay. That's interesting. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so obviously we get that. And then, you know, when Franklin gets back to the city, um, that's when he, he visits, you know, Louis. And of course he gets the news about, you know, Louis going behind his back and he's he's upset and angry, but he's well within his rights to be angry because, you know, they did go behind behind his back. And then we get him at the diner with Teddy and, you know, uh, the base, the basis of this conversation is, you know, he tells Teddy everything he's done for him, basically, and, and the government, I guess, because, you know, he's made them 56 million or whatever to fight this war in the Contra or whatever. And then, um, and yeah, so his, his stance is basically, you know, it's it's time for me to get out now because you betrayed the trust, you went behind my back. So I'm getting out, I'm getting out on my terms, as you said, Rich, you know, he's getting out on his terms. Um, and yeah, I mean, that is interesting in itself because that takes a, a a large amount of pride, I think, on his behalf to to just be like, look, you know, um, I've done what I can do. I've got enough money now and I have, you know, Veronique, I have this child coming. So, you know, these people are not loyal to me anymore. So I'm going to take what I've got and I'm going to cash out. I'm going to get out of the game. Um, so that took a lot for him to do that, you know, because he, like in the past, he would never do that. Like he would never he like he would find a way to maintain his position, you know, even if it would end to his, even if it would lead to his death, he would try to find a way to stay in the game. But now he's he's ready to get out, and I don't know how genuine this was, or if there's some sort of plan or strategy behind this, or if he has some other plans that he's trying to do. But I think that you know, based on what every, everything that happened before, I feel like you know this is this was a great journey for, for Franklin, like just to see him thinking in a different way, you know, like, cause we, we've, we've sort of never seen this side of him before. So I think that was interesting to watch, you know, uh, this whole time, but, you know, with the trailer and we are going to get to this discussion soon, but with that trailer, I guess that can kind of change everything that can kind of throw everything I just said out of the door because, you know, there's going to be, there's going to be some new consequences for people to face, you know, once, once that whole uh, money thing happens. But, but yeah, I just really liked in these last two episodes, I just really liked seeing like this different side of Franklin. Um, and, you know, this, this episode was kind of like the conclusion of that, of us seeing this, you know, this new um, understanding that he has about him and his position and his past and all of the things that has happened and, you know, all of the people in his life, you know, he's been evaluating everything. And, you know, he came to that decision that it was time to end things with Teddy. And um, it is a very fitting time as well, because we have the whole KGB thing happening as well with Ruben. So there are some, some like, this could go either way. Like, it's, if, if you're looking at it on, you know, in terms of Franklin versus Teddy, like, you know, it's not lopsided. It's not, you know, we don't have to look at it as like Franklin can't do anything to to take out Teddy because, you know, because of the position he's in. 
Teddy is vulnerable too at this moment in time because we see that the KGB are around and they're snooping and they're they're planning something. So both both sides are vulnerable at this moment. So I think that is great to see. Um, and we know we have a whole another season to watch, you know, um, of this story take place. So um, yeah, I very much love this episode and and what it sets up um, and all, all of the things, you know, as usual with Snowfall, it says a lot of things without actually saying it. So like, you know, just from the stuff that happens, we're able to analyze, we're able to like see what is going on without them necessarily saying it. Um, there's a lot of depth to the writing and the things that are happening. So I love it. It is very well written. Um, but that is my takeaway, you know, for, for this week. Um, and we are going to get to our questions and discussions now. But just, you know, quick reminder, first of all, please do hit the like button if you are enjoying this. Take the time to respond to, you know, something we might have said in our takeaways or whatever. Um, and yeah, also consider hitting the subscribe and the bell button if you do like the channel and everything like that. Um, so yeah, um, time to get to the questions and discussions because I wanna, I definitely wanna hear from Rich a lot more about, you know, what he thinks um, is coming. So um, I guess we'll get to to this first. So Louis has offered Buckley, you know, a position in her company. I guess you know she needs some some sort of security. She needs someone to back her up, someone who's experienced because she knows that Kane is likely going to come back. You know, he's, he, he might make some sort of retaliation move. So who better to help her in that scenario than Buckley, who has, you know, he has the, the, the experience of using guns and, um, you know, doing raids and all these different things. So, you know, she decides to recruit him and she knows that he's in a very vulnerable position because he's been suspended and he has family issues and he has a drug habit now. Um, so she decides to, you know, recruit him. So I want to ask you, Rich, do you think Buckley is definitely going to take up this offer? And, you know, whether he does or whether he doesn't, what do you see being the conclusion to this, you know, in the in the long term? Well, before I give my answer, I'm going to say, yeah, excellent takeaways as well, Gary. Yes, very, very thorough, well thought out explanation. So, but to answer your question, um, I think it's very interesting how before like there was like there was a scene like before uh Franklin arrived to have this conversation with Louie. Louis and Jerome were talking about what are we gonna do about Buckley? And I thought that was that was a you know, because they was talking about Louis is you know, she said she put so much into that relationship with Buckley, the connections and, and all this other stuff. So she didn't want to get rid of, she didn't want to throw all that away. But there was a question of, do you think we're going to have to take him out? Which I find it, which I find to be very interesting. Now, the thing about her making this decision to bring him on, we don't know what Jerome's response is to that situation yet. We know that Jerome does not have a good relationship with Buckley because we saw the last exchange they had. It was about to get very physical. So I'm very curious to know what his response is going to be when he finds out in the next episode, perhaps that Louis did decide to make him a part of, you know, to basically stay there and be a part of what they're working on. Um, I don't know if, I don't think he's going to take that very well, actually. Um, and everything you said about him, you know, being addicted to drugs, this is something that's definitely going to take a toll over time. So he will not be quite as reliable. Yes. As Louis alluded to, he has friends in the force that he can maybe reach out to. But I think what you said in your takeaways about the fact that, he has a bit of a target on his back because again, Kane was not killed. And the Kane thing is, is, is a very big deal because this guy won't walk again. You think he's not going to want to try to get some type of retaliation? No, he a hundred percent is going to want to get retaliation. So um, I feel like Buckley being involved with Louie, that makes him very vulnerable. It makes them even more vulnerable now to be associated with him and always have him around. So, this is not going to end well, um, but uh, I think, yeah, it, it's no way it's going to be that easy. I mean, yes, we give props to Louis for basically making a power play and keeping him involved, but really, you know, I don't think she's thought through 
what you know what the cost is of doing these types of things. And I feel that the end game is that at some point she is going to pay for all of these decisions. And again, I think Jerome is going to be the one that is the one that's in that is end up ta- you know the one that's going to eventually be taken out. Um, the last point I want to make though is that what I love about this episode is that as I mentioned earlier, I thought Buckley was going to be the one to basically after he lost his job and then he's and then he's he's a threat of losing his kids. I thought he would be the one to come back and now be a threat to both Louis and Jerome. I also thought that Kane was going to be that same person, but now Kane is not in a position to do it himself physically. Whereas all along, that person is now Franklin, which and that's why I think it's so brilliant because as you said, the last two episodes we saw a different side of Franklin. You saw what was in his head the previous episode. Then you saw what he really thought in this episode. And then I think in the next episode, you're going to see a person that is befitting of the title monster. Since he said the family calls him a monster, now you're definitely going to see that now. So, um, yeah, Franklin definitely is somebody that they need to watch out for. But we'll find out what happens. But uh, Buckley, I wouldn't trust that that's going to work. And I'm very curious how they're going to tell that story from here on out. Oh, yeah, definitely. And um, what you said as well about his drug habit and how that makes him unreliable, that's that's definitely true. And I, I think, like, I could foresee, you know, um, maybe he does something like, you know, maybe he tries to steal something in the club or he's doing something reckless and Jerome is the one that finds him or mm-hmm. you know, sees him doing this. And then, you know, that will, might create some some conflicts because he might, you know, he might try to retaliate or rough rough him up or they might fight or something. And then, you know, that creates more more problems for Louis, who who now has a lot to deal with uh, with her new position. Um, and yeah, um, so I'm, I'm very interested to see where this whole Buckley thing goes, because he is a walking target now. Um, um, I mean, it's still it's still a risk for anyone to try and kill him because I don't think he's I think they suspended him. Right. Or was he actually fired? I can't remember. No, they said he was suspended uh, pending, you know, the the the, the, the drug tests. Uh, mm-hmm. But they asked him to yeah give 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 us your gun and your badge. So I'm assuming that this guy is not going to have a chance to get his job back because something's going to happen to him before any of that ever comes to uh, to a head. Right. Yeah. So. So, yeah, I guess he 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 doesn't have the protection of, of uh, the police anymore. But so that does make him vulnerable. But uh, but yeah, so yeah, it, it's going to be interesting to see what comes from that, because this is a guy you can't trust no matter what. And, you know, him losing his position, losing his his job and everything that also takes away the trump card that Louis had. of You know, this guy can bust whoever I say or whatever like that's been been taken mm-hmm. away because remember we were speculating that maybe she'll pull that card on Franklin you know yep. and have him taken down but she can't use that anymore you know so really he's just muscle now but if he is hooked on these drugs he is not going to be good muscle you know he's not going to he's not going to be reliable um so yeah and and see, and let me just add this last point, and this may, may, may or may not be related. With this particular storyline and the fact that you know that he is unstable, I think that this can definitely be handled better than what they did with Peaches. Because with Peaches, you had no idea that this guy was just going to leave them high and dry. That's why I'm hoping, you know, we do get uh, find, get a proper ending for that character next season. Um I don't really know what the plan is, but the fact that he would just completely disappear. And I, I kind of feel like they could potentially, because we, because we never saw, we saw that he was always sick. There was no, you didn't see him always using drugs and nothing like that. So that, that's why I question that, that, that decision. But uh, at least with this storyline, you're definitely going to see um, it is believable that this could fall apart because you've seen the struggles that he has. You, you've seen, how his family life has been impacted by all this stuff that's happening. And you've also seen how dirty and ruthless this guy is. Because again, what what I found interesting is when he describes the story to the officer and then they show you what actually happened. 
He was the one that was shooting left and right, all this other stuff, and started all of it. So um, the character really is three-dimensional because you see the negative sides of him, but then you also see he does have a family. He does have kids. So it's the kind of, you know, he has a bit of, of, of a human element to him as well. But we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, that's what's great about this show. Like, you know, we, we see all the layers, you know, instead of just, you know, he's a bad guy or whatever. Like, you know, we see the, the struggles he has. You know, he has children. He wants to to see them. But, you know, he's he's just in a, a messed up position. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, that that is... That is good. Um, I also think that uh, because I think I, I saw that Louis has a stash spot in, in the club uh, where she keeps money and stuff. Yeah, they showed she that. Might, mm-hmm. She might, might want to move that, you know. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That That's um, and that could be the very reason why they showed that, because that might get rated soon. So, yeah, definitely. So she, she might want to switch up where she keeps the cash. Like, you know, that that's one of the that should be one of the priorities now that she's taken over. Um, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sure that uh, Franklin, he might be he also might be the one coming after that money, you know, based off of what happens in this next episode. But we'll, we'll have to wait and see how that's going to play out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's definitely a possibility. And uh, speaking of Louis as well, like, um, <laughs> Like she was really on a power trip. Like I thought it was super disrespectful when when she was like to Franklin. She was like, um, "Oh, you know, as, as as a gift to you, I'll I'll let you have you know uh, one of the territories, whichever one you like. Just let me know." Like that was her basically just stunting on him. Like, yeah, th- this is my show now, but you can have this little piece of it right there. <laughs> but you know, but you know, it, it it is it is a perfect fit, fitting into this story, seeing as how. She played a role in helping him to really get started with selling the, you know, Coke from season one. And now it comes full circle and she is trying to take over the entire operation. So that's that's good to see that because it shows you how power hungry somebody can get when they're into the, these the, the, this type of business. So and it doesn't yeah. matter that they are family either. So that that's that's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it also shows that you know that during that legendary uh, that legendary scene we saw earlier this season where Franklin snaps on her, yeah, you know he he throws that tantrum or whatever, and he has that that epic speech. Um, that re- she really took that to heart, I think. You know. Oh yeah. So this. Oh was- yeah, yeah. They 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 were still that they were still processing that you know in the in the in the episodes that followed afterwards. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. So. This this was kind of her moment as you know to kind of to kind of get back at, at him for that I guess and um, and I think next week we're really gonna see if Franklin follows through with what he said at that moment you know oh where, yeah yeah it, there's nothing he isn't prepared to do <laughs> so he has yeah. to he got no money now <laughs> <laughs> yeah very true but um. So before we get to, you know, the trailer stuff again, um, so, you know, we saw the scene where the KGB, they kind of, um, first of all, when they were speaking to Sissy, they let it be known that after being at the wedding, there were two people they were very interested in. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of those people was Avi and the other was Gustavo. Um, and then later in the episode, we see them break into Avi's uh, warehouse or base of operations, you know, wherever it is. Um, and then, you know, Avi actually catches them going through his, his stuff. Um, and a fight breaks out. He, first of all, he shoots one of the guys and then, you know, he fights Ruben, um, and Ruben is eventually able to knock him out. Um, so I'm waiting to ask you, uh, what do you think is going to happen next with that scene? You know, um, uh, you mentioned earlier that they're probably going to, you know, question him or have some sort of interrogation um, scene with, with Avi. Uh, I, I could definitely see that happening. Um, and then also they'll probably go through all the stuff and they'll probably find out about, you know, the deal he made with uh, with Teddy. Uh, I could see that happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, what else do you think might come from, from this, you know, in particular? Well, that's a good question. Uh, I'm not sure how much information they know 
about the drugs and how it's connected to the war. So that that whole thing with Avi being the one to supply weapons is a very big deal. And and that's that best best that basically uh puts everybody in a lot more hot water. So what I think is going to happen is, uh, you know, I, first and foremost, as I said, I, Avi is not dead. I'm pretty sure he just got knocked unconscious. And when he comes to, they're probably going to try and go back and forth to try to get him to spill beans on what, what has happened. Now, the other issue, though, again, is that now that they will have him in some type of custody, because, I mean, they're not going to let this guy walk free. I mean, you probably take him captive or whatever. But now that they have him, in, 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 in some type of custody. The interesting thing here is that we know that he had a conversation with Teddy in this episode about, you know, that Teddy wants to triple the amount of guns he wants to buy. We don't know where that transaction is at right now. We know that there is a guy that's helping Teddy get the money out of uh, Franklin's accounts. So that's pretty much set. But as far as Avi making this deal to get the product, he could have already gotten the guns and the guns could be on the way. So that's why I say it's it's a bad situation because it has a trickle down effect because it also impacts Teddy. And if Teddy was to, after hearing what happened with Franklin, and by the way, I didn't get any indication from Teddy's conversation with Franklin after Franklin told him, oh yeah, I got high at that, you know, high off the LSD and that's why I made that call to you. I didn't get any indication that Teddy was remorseful and said, oh, well, Maybe I should uh, try to get his money back. I didn't get any of that. Now, I'm curious if there's going to be a scene next week where he's going to be like, oh, hey, I need I need you to stop this uh, transaction from happening. Oh, it's too late. It's already happening. Maybe that's going to happen next week because we did see some of, some of that in the trailer where he's on the phone talking to the guy. But um, I think at the end of the day, um, it has a trickle-down effect what happens to Avi because he's connected to Teddy and Teddy is connected to Franklin and Teddy has already tried to get access to Franklin's money. So this is definitely going to have uh, major ramifications. Uh, the other thing worth mentioning is that when Avi sees the guy, he's like, wait a minute, I recognize you. And we know that he saw Sissy talking to this guy also at the party last week. So I'm very curious to know what's going to happen in terms of, uh, is Sissy going to get outed by Avi, so on and so forth? Is he going to relay this information? I mean, there's a lot of questions that I want to ask and see as far as what's going to happen with that. But what I will say is, yes, Avi is alive. And the fact that they have him in custody, this is not good news for everybody that he is connected to. So we'll have to see what happens. Yeah. And um, Avi does strike me as a guy who... Like, he seems like a rider. He seems like he won't give up information easy or he won't sell anyone out easily. Mm -hmm. So they are really going to have to torture him, like, I think, to get any information. But if they tie him up or, you know, bind him or something, they, they could easily access, you know, all the other stuff he has around at his base and find find some stuff out there, I guess. But... um I, I think what they are going to have to see is what 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 is something vulnerable about him that we can expose? You know that he has a girlfriend. Um, would they try and, 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 you know, do something with her? Would they try to take away the entire business operation that he has, how he's making money? I mean, they, they, they're going to be ways they're going to have to pressure him to give up some information. So I'm curious to know what that actually is going to be. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know a lot about the KGB and the kind of juris jurisdiction they had and what they can do and everything like that. Uh, that might be something I, I, I research later. But um, but yeah, because uh, I, I know they were they were a real thing at the time as well. But um, I don't know what, how much they could do. But um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what kind of extent they go to to kind of bring down you know these people, Gustavo and Teddy. And I really think that if Sissy is able to to tell Franklin what what is happening, I think Franklin can leverage this situation also. Um, so maybe that well, is something we, we might see happen. That's a great question, a great thought. Uh, Franklin probably going to be very preoccupied in the next episode, though. So I I, I don't know how his, I don't know how focused he is going to be on that if he's angry about not having his money. So um, 
<laughs> but yeah, that's very possible. We'll have to see how they actually uh, tell that story. Yeah, indeed. So, of course, we have to acknowledge that there there, there has been a trailer since this episode aired. Uh, <laughs> a trailer for the finale, and you know, we saw some exciting stuff happening in this trailer. We saw Franklin, you know, um, talking to Louis. We saw you know Teddy on the phone. We saw you know basically it seems like Franklin loses money. And he he's he's out for blood. He's trying to get you know his money back. He's trying to make people pay. Um, there's some serious things going on in the trailer. Um, so uh, let's see these questions. So uh, first of all, I guess I'll ask you this, Rich. So you know, focusing particularly on that scene between Louis and, and Franklin, it looks like he held, he holds up a gun to her. You know, but by the way, it's edited. We know sometimes they play tricks with us with the trailer and everything. So maybe, you know, he could be pointing at someone else. Maybe somebody shows up. We don't know. But I want to ask you, um, do you think Franklin might actually hurt Louis, you know, or worse next week? Like based on that, what, what do you think? That's a great question. I, I, you know, the thing about it is this. I, I, I kind of find it interesting how he can get to Louis so easily. If, if Jerome, Jerome has to be there, I would think. If he's not there, um, that'd be very interesting. But my guess is that, well, we'll, 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 we'll again, we'll give a shout out to, to JB because he had noticed that also in that trailer that there was a scene of overhead shot of two people that are obviously, you know, they're dead on the ground. And he had made a comment that, yeah, Franklin would probably come over to where their security is at and just shoot them dead, which is probably going to happen. Um, but to answer your question about Louis specifically, that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to figure out because I kind of feel like going into the next season, there has to be a major death. I don't know if it's a situation where you take out, Louis and Jerome in this particular instance. So that's why I question whether or not he is there when she when she actually when they have this disinteraction. Because we already know that Jerome, Jerome said he does not want to get involved, but at the same time, he's going to stand up for his woman and, and help her out. So that's why I question whether or not he's there when this actually happens. But if I had to make a guess, Franklin definitely is going to threaten to kill her. At the very least, I don't know if he's going to actually pull the trigger. He may have some hesitations in a situation where Jerome, if Jerome is there, Jerome may be the one that ends up taking the bullet. So um, it's hard for me to tell from the trailer because, as you said, they do a very good job of editing the trailer and making you think certain things, but then it's something completely different. But I will say at the very least, he's going to definitely scare the hell out of Louie next week. Because he did say, as you said, he will, he, is, he is prepared to do whatever he needs to do. And you don't mess with somebody's money. So obviously, you know, that also, if you think about it, to piggyback off of the same conversation that he had with Louis earlier in this season. And then he went back to Teddy. And Teddy said, the problem with your people is that you have basically had, you know, you basically have them getting paid more than you now. So that goes back to the fact that yes, she's you know his money is is basically been taken away from Ed, from from uh from Teddy, but yeah, Louis and Louis and Jerome they have obviously been making a lot more since they have split off from from Franklin. So I definitely feel like um he is definitely going to scare her next week. I don't know if he's going to kill her, but whatever happens, their relationship will not be the same. If she survives, their relationship will never be the same again. Uh, after what happens next week. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I think that something drastic definitely has to happen next week. Like that's that's just a fact because we know season six is the final season. And to really set that up, like there has to be a significant impact. You know, there has to be something major coming, you know, in this next episode. And and I do think you take you take Franklin's money away. Cause that is the plan he had, you know, to, to use that money to, that was his, his retirement plan. And then, you know, he has a child coming also. So you take that money away, you take, you know, his, his security blanket away. He is, he's not going to be, you know, he's not going to be reasonable anymore. Like we saw in this episode. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, I think he could definitely 
hurt someone or kill them. Uh, but what was you going to say? I, I agree 100%. And I just thought of it. And, and I, I think, uh, you know, he actually may kill Louis because mm-hmm. in that same trailer, you saw that uh, uh, Teddy gets on the phone and says, if you think you've lost everything, you just wait. So that tells me either one of two things are going to happen. Either Teddy next week is going to have a run-in with, with, with Ruben and find out that Sissy had played a role in that, or because of the fallout of, that happens between Louie and Franklin, Franklin kills Louie. And again, because Teddy took away his money, well, I took away the other person, the other person who you decided to do this deal with, and I'm, and I'm out the game now. So now you're in a very bad situation. So I kind of feel like that trailer, but again, because they like to edit certain things, that could have happened before or after the whole Louis and Franklin exchange, so it's hard to tell. But I kind of feel like something, I agree with what you said, something drastic has to happen now because we already know that the end game here is Louis, I'm going to say Teddy versus Franklin. That's the end game here. Mm -hmm. And to get to that, something has to happen because – I believe I mentioned on this podcast before that I thought that we were going to get confirmation that we know for sure that Alton is dead. All right. There was Teddy never admitted to any of this stuff. So it's hard to tell what's what happened with Alton. Um, But what I will say is that you have to give Franklin a reason to be angry and you have to give Teddy a reason to be angry for them to go against each other. And I think that that's it. So if he kills Louie, that makes sense. And now it sets them on their collision course next season the what, what we have been waiting for teddy versus franklin so we'll see yeah yeah and you said something very um very stand out that i was actually thinking earlier as well because you know now that teddy has gone like well now that louis gone behind franklin's back and she's dealing direct with teddy you know um and franklin is out the game you know if if franklin takes out louis Teddy has has no one. He has yep. no one to to you know to work with. To he has to find somebody new. Basically, he has to start over again. So that is a a, a really good strategy for Franklin to exercise to just take out Louis, and then Teddy literally has no one. And of course, Franklin is the most qualified person for Teddy to want to work with. <laughs> you know, he, he's been working with him the whole time. So that would be a logical thing, you know, to do to take out Louis. Um, but, you know, it's it's just a, a matter of what is going to be that breaking point that makes him feel like he can do that, you know, that makes him feel like he has the, the reason to do that. Because, you know, Louis going behind his back is one thing, and we know he was very upset about that. You mm-hmm. know, but, you know, I think his money being gone, I think, yeah, that, that could be also a, a huge breaking point. That could be the final thing that's like, you know what? This is it. I'm going to, you know, I'm doing something. I'm hurting somebody. So, oh, yeah. Because it puts him in jeopardy. It puts his, his, you know, his wife, soon to be wife, and of course, his baby. Mm -hmm. So, that's a fully understood uh, reasoning. What I'm curious to see, though, is going to be the fallout. Because if he does kill Louis, what's going to happen with Jerome? Jerome did not want to get caught in the middle of any of this. This is why I say it's it's very interesting to see how this is going to play out because, you know, Jerome did not want to get involved in any of this. And we we thought, well, Jerome will probably get taken out by somebody before that happens. That didn't happen. So it literally puts him in a, like you said earlier, he's going to be tested. He will be tested for sure, I think, next week. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um. So, so I think we we also saw in this trailer. I think uh, Franklin was talking to someone. Also, I can't remember the exact words. But um, do you think he he's trying to get Leon to help him as well? Because it seemed seemed like he was trying to, um, you know, talk to someone and get someone to help him or something of that nature. So, do you think he's gonna try and get Leon involved in this? Um, that's a good question. I actually think he's calling his mom sissy. Okay. And asking her because the last couple episodes they have not had pleasant conversations. He went off on her twice. The episode, you know, previous episode when they were high, he went off on her, and then prior to that. So I kind of feel like because he was apologizing to everybody in this episode to some extent, 
I think his first reaction when he finds out something happens to his money is to run to his mom and ask her, hey, I need your help. Can you help me figure this out? And I think that's who he's going to run to first. Mm -hmm. Um, because Leon has his own things he's got to worry about. So, uh, but I, I think it's, I think Sissy is who he was on the phone with. If I had to make a guess. All right. Okay. And I guess if, you know, if there really is something suspect about Varonique, I think we'll, we'll find out for sure next week because mm -hmm. you know, once that money's gone, you know, what is her stance then going to be, you know, is she going <laughs> to stick around? Is she going to leave? You know, so I think if, if there is something funny with her up, we, we're definitely going to find out. And people are even speculating that she's in cahoots with Teddy. So, you know, if that's the case, then we, I guess we'll see that, you know. Well, they, yeah, they, they haven't had any interaction yet this season. Um, we know that she worked with Grady, the, the prior boss, that she worked closely with him prior. So I, I have no idea. Um. In the trailer, she did make a mention about, well, we can all get caught if we do this. So I know that Franklin probably will say something to her about being angry and taking action against Louis and Jerome for this. So it, it definitely is going to have a conversation with her about it. But, you know, I, I'm i curious to see how they how they, how that's going to play out. But if I had to make a guess who he's talking to on the phone at that moment in the, in the trailer, it probably it, it has to be Sissy. It has to be his mom because... His mom is somebody who he can trust next to Veronique the most. Mm -hmm. I still think the mom would have the edge over Veronique, despite the fact that they've, they have not gotten along quite as well in the last couple episodes, because she's been a part of this from the very beginning. She still supported him. She didn't get rat, she didn't rat on him, any of this other stuff, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And he is very, like, I think he has a lot of love still for his mom. Like, um, so a lot of affection and stuff. So I think, yeah, she is going to be like that, that one person he can go to or that he mm -hmm. feels like he can go to for, for help and guidance. So yeah, you're probably right. Um, but yeah, was there anything else at all from the trailer or is there any other particular prediction you have for, you know, the finale uh, next week? Hmm. Oh, it's, um, it's tough. It's, it's, it's tough to say for sure. I'm very curious to know what's going to happen with Leon's story, um, because the idea of him having a happy ending with Wanda, I'm, I'm sure fans want to see that because they like the Leon character and they like the relationship that he has with her. But for some reason, I don't think that this ends positively for every character. Uh, Leon, again, this is a guy that he has been remorseful. He's trying to get back to doing good things for the community. But we have to acknowledge what happened last season. And I kind of feel like he 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 was not going to be able to really escape that, you know, and just despite the fact that he wants to give back to the community, you cannot ignore the fact that he was involved in that shooting that happened last season. So I am curious if his past is going to catch up to him, because it feels to me like after what happened last week at that party and the fact that, you know, you now have these same people investigating Gustavo, Avi, etc. It feels like everybody's past is going to catch up to them. We know that Louis in the past, all the stuff that she went through when she was trying to get access to that club. And eventually now she's at the highest point that she is in life. So now is the, the downfall for her character as well. So I'm very curious, you know, obviously I don't think everybody's story is going to end badly or, 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 or uh, tragically, so to speak. But it feels like some of these characters, it has to end. It has to end a certain type of way because of how how much bad stuff they've actually done. So I'm curious. Now I don't want to see Leon. I don't want to see nothing happen to bad to Leon or Wanda. And I think that it's good to have Wanda, you know, basically get over being an addict and try to get on a positive path. So I don't want anything bad to happen to those characters. But I kind of feel like something is going to happen because it's, it feels as though it's a, it's going to be a tragic end because I feel like if Leon wanted to leave and just take her with her, he would just do it like the next episode. He, he, he should just do it right away. You don't want to wait, you know, until something happens or things escalate. And then you have to question whether or not you're actually going to make it out. So I kind of feel like if he does not do something next week and maybe actually decides to depart, to, you know, leave with her, 
something's probably going to happen to one of those characters before the before the show ends. But um, that's my guess as to what's going to happen. But we'll we'll see, because I feel like everybody, it's not going to end happy for everybody. We know that for a fact. So we'll see how how that goes. Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, I think there's no possible way at this point that, you know, uh, anyone can could just have a happy ending like that. I think they're so deep in the game um, and, you know, they all have like pasts and backgrounds that are going to come back to haunt them. So um, I think next week we're going to see a lot of things from the past catch up to certain characters. Um, and yeah, uh, I think some you know, some people's some people's favorite characters could could get hit next week. So <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Um, but but yeah, uh, this was a great episode. Um, it left us with a lot of a uh, lot of great speculation and theories and things to talk about. I can't wait to see what the people are saying in the comments and everything and what the people think. Um, so yeah, I will be, you know, in there responding to comments, reading, seeing what, 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 what everyone's saying and everything. And I'm very excited for, for next week's finale episode. Uh, mm -hmm. I actually can't wait for it. So yeah. And it has been uh, a pleasure to, to be able to, to cover this show again this year. You know, we did it with the last season also, but yeah, this, this season has been, been great and I'm glad they've been able to, uh, succeed, you know, uh, John, John Singleton's work. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, in, in a good way and everything like that. I agree. 100%. Yeah. So, yeah, with, with that being said, uh, we are going to end off here. Uh, we will be back next week to, to cover that finale. Um, but until then, everyone, take care of yourselves. I hope you all enjoy the long weekend, you know, Easter break and everything like that. Um, and, yeah, we, we'll, we'll see you next week. Take care, everyone. Take care. Peace.